So we've got our first 30 days under our belt. And so there's a lot to go through on today's call. So um, I broke down on your numbers. I'm going to pull those up in a second. But tell me, just give me an update overall of how you think the month of April went, where your mindset's at right now, and then any questions that you have, and then we'll jump into today's coaching call. Yeah, I think my biggest problem so far has just been keeping my appointments, um, uh, listing appointments, you know, set. Um, that's like on track, like with your stats, you know, but um, listing appointments actually kept is, is very, very low. Uh, so that's where I need to work on. Um, 50 contacts a day was really hard for like the first week. Um, I finally kind of got into the groove this week. Um, so yeah, that's pretty much where I'm at, I think. Cool. How are you... Like, where's your, uh, where's your mindset at? Like what's, what's your state of emotions right now? Um, I mean, I haven't got to the point where I, you know, I'm in love with cold calling. Um, it's still, you know, kind of like a task every day. Um, but it's, it's getting to be, you know, better just, just cause like I'm doing it every single day. Um, yeah. So let's, let's, all right. So let's talk about that first. Um, what, what don't you, what don't you like about it? I think it's, it's, it's the fact that I'm setting appointments every now and then, but I'm not actually going on, on any. Um, so it feels like it's all for nothing. Cause I haven't been in a house in forever. Yeah. You know what I mean? I guess yeah. in front of a computer a couple hours each day and then yeah, I'm not seeing anything. So yeah. Yeah. So, so it's interesting, right? I mean, everybody who starts this process kind of feels the same way with inside their first 30 days, right? Because you've made more contacts in 30 days than you probably have being a realtor. And so we're going to look at some of these numbers and say, okay, well, what's working, what's not working, where do we need to tweak? And then I want, I'm going to make some I'm going to make some, uh, some observations that I think will help your mindset with that yeah. because the job, here's the, the big, big first aha is that the job of a real estate agent is, is sales. And so when we look at, okay, well, what does a salesperson do? I think this is the biggest mindset opportunity for you so far is accepting the fact that your job is to be on the phone and or meeting with people. And right now your skills are at like the starting point of the race. Yeah. And so you're not, you're setting some appointments, but your skills aren't even close to where they will be in three, six, nine, 12, 18, 24 months from now, you're still in the learning phase. And so you're still fighting fear, insecurities, doubt, all these things are creeping in and you're having to deal with that as you're putting forth great effort. And so that causes great deception because there's probably a part of you to your point that says, why am I doing this? Am I right? Yeah, exactly. So, so tell me about that. Tell me about the mindset there because we can pull from other conversations, right? We can pull from the conversations you and I had about how deep rooted your why was about why you wanted to do this. And then we can say, okay, now we're into this 30 days and we're having thoughts of quitting and not that you're going to quit, but I want to talk about the mindset of, of where you're at there. Okay. Yeah. Um, I mean, like I said before, you know, it's, it's, it's just a challenge. Um, I know, I know that I have to, you know, prospect every day and, you know, e even when I don't feel like it, uh, but it's, it's just hard to get myself to do it, you know? Yeah. I mean, it's the thing is, it's like, I relate a lot of things to, to working out and health and fitness because people can make sense of that more than they can make sense of like going through the process that you're going through. Um, and, you know, like working out, I mean, it, it takes, and you can Google this, but I think it takes, and I'm going to spitball here. It takes about 90 days. If you were to Google, Hey, how long does it, does it take to see results from working out and dieting? And it's probably like 90 days, you know, and then for that's for, for, for you to notice. And then for other people to notice it's even longer. Right. Yeah. And I think the biggest problem that we have is being patient. And thinking about things in the moment instead of big picture. 
Because let me paint a big picture for you. Are you ready? Sure. Here's what actually happened when we put the emotion aside. When we look at the facts and you and I were analyzing the facts like we were scientists, here's what would have occurred. Here's what did occur. And I'm going to share my screen with you now. In the last 30 days, you, uh, your first real 30 days, I would say, you, you were on the phone for almost 70 hours, right? Of So let's look at that for a second. Well, let's just go through the, the, the outcomes, then we'll back into it. So okay. 70 hours, we made 6,000 outbound calls. We spoke to 750 people. You generated 97 leads. These are people that emails that you've gotten, right? That you added to the database. Yep. Yep. That's right. Okay. You generated seven listing appointments and you went on two of those listing appointments. This has all occurred in 30 days. Now, the question is, okay, what other activities could we have done to generate the same results? So let's talk about before you and I started working together. You you were before you and I started this. So, so we really, I, I would say, started in the beginning of April. So, before that, how long were you selling real estate for? Uh, just since November, uh, really, really since December. So, um, what three months or so? So, in that three months, in that let's just look at that three month period of that the, the, the time frame, how many leads in this category of nurtures here? That you've generated, did you generate be, uh, over the past three months, not including April? Would you say how many seller leads did you add to your database? Um, do you mean like before we worked together? Yeah. Oh, not even close to that. Um, I was I was only prospecting Fizbo, so maybe in the three months, sixty. Okay. Yeah. And how many listing appointments did you set in the three month period before you started this journey? I think I went on four or five. Okay. All right. So the thing that I want to draw your attention to, the thing that the feeling of like not having progression, when you zoom out for a second and you look down on your business, this is why we you're not you and I do this every month, is what actually happened was pretty damn good because here's what happens in the first 30 days. The first 30 days, you're building a pipeline. Conversion doesn't really happen in 30 days. The average conversion from contact to listing taken on average is about 90 days. About 90 days. Because an agent, all of these contacts, let me explain to you why. How many of these 749 contacts right here? And I know you won't know this exactly. How many were first contacts versus lead follow-up contacts? Oh, I mean, if I had to guess, it's it's probably like 80, 80, 20. Yeah, I would agree. Maybe even more. I don't know. Maybe even more, right? Almost all of these conversations were the first time conversations. This is you calling a stranger out of the complete blue. Imagine a world if you keep doing this in six months from now, if you continue to have 50 conversations a day, imagine that it was flip-flopped. Imagine it was an 80, 20, 80% uh, 80 of these conversations were people you already met with, had a conversation with, been emailing once a week. They knew you by first name. They're like, oh, hey, Josh, what's up? This is when we see an agent really, really start to take a lot of listings. Does that make sense? And can you see what would happen there? Yeah, yeah, of course. I mean, the conversations would be way, way, way easier. Way easier, way more enjoyable. Right now, remember what I told you in our first call. You're you are like that. Uh, so so the mountain, right? You've you've seen this picture before. Let me unshare my screen so it's a little bit bigger. You've seen this picture before with the mountain with the guy pushing the boulder up the hill, right? I think you've explained that before. Yeah. Yeah, you're right here. Okay. Yeah, you're 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 in uh, what we call phase one, which is paying the price. And right now we're just paying the price. It is no fun. Your muscles hurt. Uh, you, you, you're aching. You don't want to wake up. You don't want to do it. But you are getting actually really good results from the standpoint of building the pipeline. We added almost 100 seller leads to your database. And oh, by the way, 
how much did you pay for these 97 leads on average per lead? Um, I guess zero, but zero. Yeah. Zero. (laughs) I mean, you just picked up the phone and called people and generated these. So when you look at this as an entrepreneur, as a business person, you say, okay, I've got, I spent 70 hours of my time, right? This is some mindset stuff that we're going through. I think it's important for you right now, based on the feedback you just gave me. But let's just say you're working, uh, what, eight hours a day on average, or would you say you're working a little bit more? Um, yeah, like let's go with eight. Sure. Yeah. So, so you, and, um, so out of a 160 hour month, which is what you're working or now you're working five days a week. Are you working weekends at all? Um, I'll do a little bit of work on the weekends. I'll call new for sale by owners. Um, okay. If I happen to have an appointment that day, then then I'll go on that, but, but it's significantly less. Got it. Okay. So let's just see here. Um, so, so we, we actually, now you, this picked up as the month went th- went on, you can see that here, but we spent about 50% of our time right now making outbound phone calls. This should be 80% right now. This should be 80%. So like in May, we're going to talk about May goals in a second. But if we're going to work, again, if we're going to work four weeks and we got a 160 hour work week, that should be, this should be like a hundred hours of outbound prospecting is where you need to be. Okay. Um, and we'll talk about that more in just a second, but what's going to end up happening is you're going to continue to generate more, obviously more conversations, more, more nurtures. And at the same time, your skills are going to increase, which you're going to set more appointments. We're going to talk about how to keep these appointments everything we just keep iterating. All you have to do is you have to try your best right now to fight the deception that you're in about like, damn, how hard this is and keep zooming out and looking at this big picture. We're 19 years old. I've been doing this for 30 days, 60 days, 120 days. Like we're talking about a 25 year career. And the cool thing about paying the price in phase one is that doesn't last forever. And you only have to do it once. You see the first year of like going through boot camp, going through this to build all these conversations where you start to really have conversion because you're having conversations with people three, four, five, six, seven times. And this is where you start to get very easy listing appointments and they keep their appointments because you have the relationship. You haven't experienced that yet. And once that starts to happen, you're going to say, ah, now you won't be able to feel that until hindsight like six, seven, nine months from now. And and when we start doing this closer to Christmas or January, you're going to look back and say, dude, I totally get it. I remember the call at the end of April, that first 30 days, you just went through the hardest 30 days, by the way. Dude, that's, that is good to hear because it was hard, right? I mean, you're keeping it real. I mean, it was hard. Yeah. Yeah, it was. (laughs) And so, um, I, I bet you, you will find that in the month of May that, it won't be easy, but I think you'll see that your second 30 days is more enjoyable. You start to strengthen your confidence and your mindset. Um, and I think the results that you want will come. And so let's talk through some of those. So if we break down the, the numbers in April, your first ratio that I want to look at is your contacts uh, per hour spot on. Okay. So you're, that means that your focus when you're prospecting is there and you're obviously using a dialer, you're using Vulcan seven to make your outbound prospecting calls, right? Um, recently I, I actually bought Mojo's triple line, just like cool. when I'm calling absentees, it cuts down the, the time really, really like a lot, you know? So, so now I can get all of my prospecting done before lunch and I can hit 50 contacts if I start at eight and, and love it. 30, 12. I love it. So you're, yeah, you're hitting 10 contacts per hour, which is directly on par with uh, where our conversion ratios need to be. All right. Now, the second thing is we've had 750, uh, 748 conversations. You haven't put your numbers in from this morning yet, have you? No. So today we're at 42 contacts so far. All right. So plus 42. So you're going to finish, you'll finish today about 800 contacts. So, um, and yeah, so you're, you're, you're actually over, um, 10 contacts. Yeah. You're almost at 12. So there's a win right there. Just so you know, when you okay. say 
all right, I feel like the work that I'm doing, I'm not, um, I'm not getting the results. Well, for every one hour of work that you're putting in right now, you're having almost 12 conversations with real potential home sellers, you know? And so you know how many realtors out there don't have 12 conversations every six minutes with, with sellers. I mean, they'd be lucky if they had 12 seller conversations this year. You're having that every hour. All right. So, so that was a big win. I, I really like that. Now, contacts per day, those are still down because we didn't ramp up to 50 contacts a day until the end of the month, as you can see here. Right. So your contacts per day is still at like 31, 32. But okay. we're going to talk about that in May and what the goal is there in just a second. Okay. okay. Your, your listing, your contact to a listing appointment dropped under 100. Okay. At the end of the month, you were over 100 before. Now it dropped over, uh, 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 you're just about 100. And so, and then the appointments kept is very low. We're going to spend the majority of the time today talking about that. Okay. Um, but you added 97 leads to your seller lead database, which is incredible. And so I want to just clarify these. Yeah. Walk me through what happens when you get one of these. Like, what is the conversation? What happens on the conversation? How does it end? And what is the person's expectation when you generate a lead? Yeah. So if it's like a for sale by owner, you know, because most of these are either FISBOs or they're, um, like they may be absentees. Uh, if it's a FISBO and I couldn't set the appointment, couldn't set a preview, um, then I'll be like, okay, uh, I'd love to, you know, send you my backup plan an email. I grab their email, send them the backup plan, and I just follow up with them, you know, um, Mondays. And then, um, and, and then like I set them up, like on a, I mean, like on, on like a weekly uh, MLS email. Perfect. And then if it's an absentee, uh, you know, I'll say, great, I'd love to do a price analysis on the home, uh, and then email you the results, and then we can go from there. So grab their email send them a price analysis and then follow up. Yeah. Like in a couple of days after they've had some time to look at it. Got it. And so that's the other good thing is like so, these 97, like there's a certain percentage of those people that are going to list and sell their house with a real estate agent in the future, like guaranteed. Right. Yeah. And so um, you just haven't, you, you haven't tasted pipeline maturity yet. And that's like the most beautiful thing where all these nurtures turn into listing appointments and listings you'll really, really get it. And at that time is when you will never stop making 50 contacts a day because yeah. you know you've, you've experienced the full pipeline maturity. You would have went from first contact to lead follow-up to, to nurturing these folks over a couple of months into an opportunity. Now, what happened here on the 19th? You were able to get uh, 20 of those in one day. Yeah, so that was after we had talked and you said expand your radius, you know, to an hour away. Yep. So I went on Zillow and I looked at all of the for sale by owners within an hour radius. And so I was able to call, um, I think all my contacts that day were, were just for sale by owners. So I was able to add a lot of them, you know, to send them send like a backup plan. That's why it was so high. So you expanded to an hour radius and generated 20 leads in one yeah. day. Yeah, so now I went from going, you know, now I went from getting maybe two FISBOs a day. Um, on, on a, on an average day, I'll get, uh, eight, you know, awesome. Just more opportunity for us. Right. Yeah, exactly. So, and, and is that working well so far, as far as the conversations and are you doing preview appointments at all right now? Or are you just focused on listing appointments in 2.0 script? Yeah. So that's what I wanted to talk to you about. Cause I had been using the 2.0 script for the first week that I was doing like the 50 contacts, you know, and I, and I wasn't, uh, seeing any results with it, I was getting a lot of pushback. Yeah. When I'd say, um, you know, great, I'd love to send you an email with my backup plan and we can review it, at, you know, from like at a later time, if it makes sense. Uh, then everybody would just say, okay, send me the email and then we can go from there. I wasn't yep. able to set the appointment after. Um, so now, like I talked to Yair and, you know, I'll ask for their motivation, their time frame, And then if they're motivated, I'll go for the appointment then. And then yep. I'll get the email after if that makes sense. Yeah. 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 Got it. So you're, you're just, you, you're going for the appointment before you go for the email. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And so, uh, just that, that's great because that's how the, the, the prospecting waterfall is designed, right? We need to go for the appointment first. Yep. Right. And then, and then we generate, if not an appointment, then a preview appointment and then a lead. So, so that makes sense. Um, how you're doing that now. Um, so, so let's talk about, 
I want to talk about the new script, the brand new one on how to open up a call. Have you seen that, heard about that, tried that yet? Yeah, so I just got a new role play partner from inside the group. We uh, tried that this morning. I haven't tried any calls with it yet, but um, I know what you're talking about. Yeah. Yeah, we're going to talk about that. And then I want to talk about your, let's talk about your your listing appointment kept. So so you, people are just canceling on you, right? So you set an appointment and then they just cancel for whatever reason, a bunch of different reasons, right? Yeah. I mean, today I was supposed to go on one. Her dog is sick. Uh, <laughs> the other day we confirmed and then they texted me, don't come. And then yeah. the other one is, I am like, they're going like with a family member, you know, so it's all sorts of things. Yeah. Okay. All right. So there's seven things that I want you to start doing when you generate, uh, when you set an appointment, it doesn't matter if it's a preview or a listing appointment. Anytime a human being agrees to meet with Joshua, this is, these are the seven things you're going to do. Number one, you're going to send them, you're going to email them a calendar invitation for the day and time of the meeting. Okay. You're going to send them a copy of your resume, which I'm sure you're probably already doing. Yeah. You're going to set them up on the MLS email ahead of time. So they get that triggered email today. Okay. You're going to send them a video text before the end of the day. So at the end of the day, Joshua, what you're going to do is just send a video text to anybody you set an appointment with. And that okay. video text is really simple. Hey, Joshua here. I wanted to put a face with the name. I'm looking forward to seeing you guys later this week on Wednesday at three o'clock. Uh, if you need anything ahead of time, just let me know. Looking forward to the opportunity to earn your business. Okay. Cool. That's that text script. Every lead, well, or appointment for now that, that you set should get a handwritten thank you card sent out the same day as you're adding them to your CRM. Okay. So you could just have a stack of handwritten thank you cards, Joshua, that all say the same thing. Hey, okay. thanks for taking time to, to, to uh, speak with me on the phone today. I'm looking forward to meeting with you in the future um, and, and giving me the opportunity to earn your business you know, uh, sincerely your realtor, Joshua Rebo. Okay, cool. Right. Uh, you're going to then add them on Facebook and on Instagram. This one is massive. Okay. And you want to engage with their late last post. Okay. And there's a lot of, we'll talk more about that over as, as the year progresses, but that engagement on social media goes a long way with people. And then leading up to the appointment, there's one last opportunity that you have, which is texting the seller um, something that's relevant as it relates to the MLS email. Okay. So you'll pull up that email and just say, okay, maybe there's a new listing, price reduction, a pending, a closing, a something, any change at all. And you want to text them to say, hey, just want to make sure you saw that new property that just hit the market, went under contract, sold, closed, price reduction, whatever. Um, we'll talk more about this when I see you tomorrow. We'll talk more about this when I see you Monday, Tuesday, Thursday, whatever the case may be. Those would be the seven things that, that you should do anytime you set an appointment. And I think you're going to find that your kept ratio is going to increase. So let's talk about uh, May goals, okay? Okay. So here's, here's what I would like to see happen. And then I want to talk about, well, let me ask you first. I mean, have you thought about your May goals yet? Or are you still trying to get through the rest of today? I'm still trying to get through the rest of today. Yeah. Yeah. Fair enough. Uh, so, so I've been thinking about your goals a lot. Okay. Um, and I think this is, these are some good milestones. If we can focus on this for the next 30 days, I think we'll, we'll make a lot of traction. Number one is getting through the entire month, averaging 50 contacts per day. Okay. So that should yield us. Yeah. This month you should hit a thousand contacts for the first time. Okay, cool. You're a, you're a, you're a thousand contact guy. Like that's where you live. That's the space you own. No, you, no one will be able to mess with you. And like, if you keep doing that over time, you'll win. Um, the next thing is I want to try to keep our, get our appointment set ratio to 75 right now. You're at about a hundred still. It's a little under a hundred. Okay. And I was using the numbers I saw on your tracker, but it's actually a little bit higher than that based on the numbers I just saw in the tracker. Sure. But I want to, I want to, I want to, at the end of the month, I want to get that number to 75 because what would that tell us? 
uh, that takes 75 contacts to get an appointment. So uh, that I should be setting an appointment like every other day. But right. what would what would have to occur in order for that to be true? Uh, I don't know if I'm following you. I don't know. So so let's pretend we're having our, our call at the end of May. Okay. And your conversion from contact to listing appointment set was 75. How would that have been? Like what would have uh, uh, had to have happened in order for that number to be true? I would have had to get better at my first call. That's it. Okay. Yep. Your skills would have increased. Your appointment setting ability would have increased. And so we're going to talk about the new script in just a second on how to do that. And I have some feedback for you on your calls. Your met ratio, I want to keep at 50%. I want to get that up to 50%. You're at 25, 26% now. Okay. And I want to take two contracts. I want you to have two listings taken in May. Okay, cool. Now, when we talk about number two there, number one, I think you're going to fall into a rhythm. You know, you probably, if you haven't already, the 50 contacts for you won't be that big of a deal here in May. I bet you'll just, you'll get over that, that hump. You'll, you'll get into a nice rhythm. Yeah. So, yeah. so the, the, uh, the first call or the first coaching call we do in May in two weeks, we're going to do your first call review. Okay. So all the live calls you're making in our Facebook group. You and I, our first call in May, we're going to take one of those and we're going to dissect the phone call. Did you listen to the mini call review I did with Dominic in our group by chance? Uh, I don't think so. Was that on a coaching call? It was like a pseudo coaching call. He was calling with the new script. I, okay. He had a great opportunity and I called him on his cell phone and we kind of, I coached him through it. You should watch that and listen to his calls. He's been with me for a while. You'll see how good his skills are. And I think you'll get inspiration from that. But the point is, we're going to go, we're going to do one of those for you in our first call in May, okay. because you have a lot of opportunity on these first calls to get better. And the first piece of feedback that I have that I think I, I want to get your, your thoughts on it is your enthusiasm from our last call to these doesn't seem like it's changed that much. I think because it's probably, probably hard for you right now to to act on the phone. Am I right? Yeah. I mean, if I try and like act enthusiastic, it's, it, it still doesn't uh, come off as that, even though, you know, I'm not like sad or angry or anything. <laughs> right. I mean, this is me being happy, but it, it just sounds like, yeah. It just sounds like you're mad. Yeah. It sounds like you're sad. I know. Yeah. No. So, so I, the, the, the thing that we talked about before that I would love to see you try and maybe you have, and I missed it, but I'm telling you the power of standing up and making your calls really does help. Now you're making your calls in, in your office right there, right? Or are you going into the office? Um, this is at my home office. Yeah. And so are you doing most of your prospecting there right now? Yeah. I mean, I mean, I do most of my work from home. So, all right. So, and you got the standing desk, right? Yeah. Right. I, yeah. I would try it, man. I would take the weekend right. off. You just had a great, your first 30 days. I would, I would relax, chill out this weekend, recharge the batteries uh, and then next week I would stand for your 50 contacts. Okay. And the other thing is you're going to burn a lot of good, clean calories standing up like that, which is going to give you energy on these phone calls. Okay. So mm -hmm. how do I come off as like energetic on the calls without sounding like, you know, annoying, you know, if I answer the call, like, Hey, Brandon, what's up? You know? Yeah. Mm. Well, well, let's talk about it. Right. So, so I'm talking you in my, just this is like you and I talking over a beer conversation. Sure. But if I call you, right, I mean, I'm going to bring some addition. When I say enthusiasm, I'm not talking about being cheesy or anything like that. I'm really talking, maybe the better word for you, Joshua, is energy, bringing okay. more energy. So like prospecting should take a lot out of you. And that's why we want that break at lunchtime, because after a you know, after I prospect two, three, four hours, like I'm drained, right? After our two hour coaching calls on Monday and Thursdays with the group, I am like dead, right? I'm dead because the energy that the heat that I'm bringing, that's why I'm kind of dragging ass today a little bit. At the end of the week, I'm just dead from all the energy expenditure. So, so let me give you an example. So if I'm calling you and you're for sale by owner, I'm just going to kind of bring the heat a little bit. Ready? So ring, ring, ring. Hello. Hey, Josh. Yeah. Who's this? 
Josh, this is Brandon. I'm a local realtor. Listen, I know you're probably getting a bunch of calls, but listen, I'm curious. Like that would be an example. I'm just okay. elevating my tonality so that the, the delivery can come through with more conviction and more confidence because you come across so passive. It's almost, it's like very easy for prospects to reject you because you don't sound like an authority figure. Okay. You sound very timid. And what sellers need and what they want from a realtor is somebody strong, confident, someone that they can like, uh, you, you, you've heard like, like, like being an authority, like you get what that means from like a content perspective, right? Yeah. So right, exactly. it, it translates in, into the real world. Like you need to be an expert authority figure on these prospecting phone calls. And we do that by showing conviction, right? So I'm standing firm in my uh, on the call, right? So somebody's like rude or whatever, I stand my ground. Joshua, listen, I didn't mean to call you to upset you. If I've done that, I apologize. My goal is to help you. Now, if you're not open to that, listen, I totally get it. I will never call you again, but here's what I know. What I know is that if you and I met, you would find great value out of our meeting. And then you could decide if I'm the type of agent you'd like to hire or not. Does that seem reasonable? Like I'm almost yelling at you, right? Like yeah, this right. is the kind of conviction you almost want to give yourself goosebumps when you're talking because the passiveness on the phone is going to, is going to be your, it's going to, it's going to crush you. Okay. And so that's what I mean. That's an example. And so all I want you to do is try it. You, I just want you to try to bring more energy, which will help you if you're standing up. And then the best way to do this, be yourself, but just talk at a louder pay, uh, at a louder frequency. You can do that, right? Oh, yeah. Yeah, I can. Like that right there. See how you're smiling? Every time you smile, your tonality and the frequency goes up. That's how I want you to be on every phone call. Okay. So I need to smile more and talk louder. Yeah. Yeah. Stand up, smile, and just talk louder. Let's start with that. Okay. So the typical call, and again, I don't want to, uh, just in the ones I've been watching, you're just very monotone. It's like, Hey, this is Joshua. You know, it's that. So I want you to speak the same way. I just want you to raise your voice. Hey, this is Joshua. I'm a local realtor. That's what I want you to do. Okay, cool. All right. And now, um, the last thing I want to go over with you today, okay, is the new call script. It's the new call script. So I designed this to help people that are committed to their business get more listing appointments. Have you, you have not tried the new script yet. You've just been role-playing it, right? Yeah, yeah, that's right. All right, so let's, I want to hear you role-play it okay. and, then, and then we'll talk through it. I'll role-play a little bit with you as well. So I'll be the prospect first, you'll be you. And then let's, I want to show you where to transition this, this conversation to. So you'll find yourself getting more listing opportunities. Are you ready? Yeah. Um, I don't exactly remember how it goes. I don't have like the script in front of me. Yeah. So I'll go first. Okay. Go ahead. Right. So I'll, let's just go very slow. And so we can work on the delivery. Ready? So ring, ring, ring. Hello, Joshua. Yeah. Who's this? Joshua. This is Brandon. I'm a local realtor. I'm not sure now's the right time, but I was hoping to uh, let you know why I'm calling. And then you can decide if we should further the conversation or not. Fair enough? Yeah, fair enough. And then I can get right into a pretty much asking for what I want right there. So it makes your calls way shorter. And there's all kinds of science behind that script. I'm not sure if you care about that right now, but if you want me to break it down, I can. But we're just, we're just, it's, it's a, it's a pattern interrupt that is like in like to the 10th degree yeah. because we're giving the prospect out of the first question on a cold call, the illusion of control. And by yeah. doing that on the cold call, we take control immediately. So this is new for me too. And it's been incredible on how this is working. I don't know if you're seeing the other people's comments, uh, but it's working very, very well. So let me do it again. Ready? Yeah. Ring, ring, ring. Hello. Hey, Joshua. Yeah. 
Joshua, this is Brandon. I'm a local realtor. I'm not sure now is the right time, but I was hoping to let you know why I was calling and then you can decide if we can have a conversation or not. Does that seem fair? Yeah, that seems fair. Cool. Listen, I saw your property go up for sale by owner. And listen, I totally respect that. Quite frankly, you probably got a bunch of realtors calling you and could be pretty frustrating. I was literally just calling to find out, Joshua, if you know you couldn't sell the home on your own, if you would be open to the idea of interviewing agents maybe in 30 days from now. And be honest. Yeah. I mean, if I can't get this home sold, you know, in three to four weeks, then yeah, I'm going to start considering some other options. Yeah, fair enough. Well, here's kind of what my thoughts are is what I'd like to do is this, and I don't think we need to agree to anything right now, but what I'd like to do is stop by, take a look at the home. And when I'm there, I'd love to share with you my for sale by owner plan. So at least you know how it works, have something to consider down the road, and then you'll decide if this is something that might make sense or not. Does that seem fair? Yeah, that seems fair. And then I'm going to set the appointment. Okay, so I wow. got to where I wanted to go, dude. I like three questions in the script. Yeah. And it gets you much more intentional conversations, which is what the prospects are responding to so well, because here's what's happening. We all, myself included, when we make the scripts too long without them having any substance, the prospect's resistance is growing. And so this allows us to shoot them straight right out of the gate and they really appreciate it. Okay, cool. Does that make sense? Like, how do you, what, what are your initial thoughts hearing the script? Um, when I, when I heard you, you know, say that, uh, intro, I think, I think you made a video on it. Uh, I think it was like a day or two ago. Yeah. Um, I thought that you'd go from that and then you'd go right into asking them, are you working with buyer's agents? And then, you know, you ask your other questions and then you ask, you know, um, if you can't sell it on your own, but you just go straight from, Hey, this is Brandon. Um, then you, you know, and like you said, then you intro and then you just ask them, would you work with realtors down the road? 100%. Yeah. I like that a lot. Yeah, dude. I mean, because they, they are liking it a lot more because I'm not wasting their time. I'm respecting their time. They decided to have a conversation. I pose what I want and I'll tell you why this works so well. We want to be in a space in these conversations to be responding to the real objection because here's what happens. Let's in, in the, in the other script, you'd start talking, are you open to working with buyer's agents? There's could be some little stupid objections you got to deal with there, right? Yeah. Then, then you try to set the preview appointment. You got to deal with some stupid objections there. Like all of them are meaningless. What we want to know is, are they open to interviewing us to list the home? That's what we want to know. And so we want to get that question on the surface as quickly as possible to do what? Uh, just not waste their time and then just make sure that they're like a qualified lead, right? But what is... Yeah, yes, you're right. But what does that sales strategy do? Like now we're using a scalpel. When we do this, we're looking to pull what from the prospect? Um, any objections? That they you got it. You okay. nailed it. Cool. We are looking to pull that immediately from the prospect so we can deal with and have a conversation and face conflict uh, uh, with, a, with a great conversation, a real authentic conversation with a prospect, maybe the first one they've ever had, where we totally shot them straight and it was permission-based. So we gave them the opportunity to have the conversation or not. They chose to say yes. Therefore, you have the opportunity to totally shoot them straight, which they are going to respect that. Okay. So that makes that's sense. the... Makes sense, right? Yeah, exactly. So... This is the other thing that I want you to start next week as well with your FISBO calls and absentee owner calls. Okay, wow. So because all of these things in combination that we just talked about today are going to help us to get to the point to hit our goals, which is a thousand contacts, upping our uh, appointment setting, just, just what we talked about as far as um, this new script. And then a, I think a call review will help you too, but by that time, we'll have two weeks worth of calls we can listen to. Just changing this script, I would venture to say that you're going to set a lot more appointments. That's been my experience so far. And it's been all of our other students' experience using the new script as well. So you okay. have brand newbies, right, that are not making the amount of dials that you are, that are, you see them. They're setting more appointments using this. It just opens up the opportunity because the other thing before I forget, 
it's hard to uncover these opportunities when the script draws out for so long and the prospect feels a little bit like a little bit slighted and their their walls and their resistance a little bit higher the longer the conversation goes and so by shooting them straight right after they agree to a conversation they're more open to having a real conversation with you yeah yeah that makes sense um i did want to ask you you know when i first started using that um other script you know like the 2.0 like before you I mean, like before you came out like with this new introduction you know you said um you know great let's not agree to do anything right now just curious well i've got you would you consider reviewing this plan now yeah so now we've kind of switched that to um you know i'd love to stop by and see the home and then while i'm there go over my plan so when i'm when i'm there it's it's kind of like a preview appointment right but how do i turn that into like you know us sitting down and going over comps and like the cma and everything does that make sense yeah 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 so so this is this is yeah so the, the actual script is, hey, when I'm there, well, here's what I'd like to do. This is you setting a listing appointment. Gotcha. So here's what it sounds like again. So Joshua, here's what I'd like to do. Let's not agree to anything right this second. What I'd like to do is stop by, take a look at the home. And when I'm there, I'll share with you how my for sale by owner plan works. This is your listing presentation, right? I'll break down how it all works. I'll break down the numbers. I'll share with you what I can do to get the property sold. If and when the day comes, you need to interview agents. And then you can decide if this is something you potentially would consider down the road. Fair enough. Yeah. Okay. So I just, I just need to add some more to it. Cause I was just yeah. saying well, I'm there. I'll just briefly go over the backup plan. Okay. Yeah. So that comes out. Yeah. And I'm sorry, it comes out a thousand different ways. Like I, I, I use it so much that I have 400 scripts for setting appointments, you know? So what you should do over the weekend, if you're going to do any type of work, on your phone or somewhere is write down your specific appointment setting script and your go-to. And so it can start off with, well, well, Bob or Sue or Joshua, why don't we do this? Let's not agree to do anything right now, or let's not agree to anything right now. What I'd like to do is stop by one day, take a look at the home, and then you can put the ending on there. But I think opening up an appointment setting script like that makes sense. And then okay. you could decide the second half of what you're going to say to get the prospect to say yes, that you set yourself up for a listing appointment. Okay. That makes sense. Cool. Yep. So what questions you have? You feel, you feel good going into May. You feel good about some of the stuff we covered right now, like from a clarity standpoint and where we're going. Yeah, I do. Um, I think I'm pretty clear on everything that I need to do in May. Uh, I, I, I have one last question for you, which is really pertaining to like absentees. Sure. How am I supposed to like stay in the pocket with them? You know, um, if I call them up and say, hey, you know, the market being so hot right now, you ever considered selling your property if you could get the right price? And then, you know, they either say no um, or they say yes. And then I go for the price analysis. What do I say if they say no? And what do I say after, um, like after I've got their email, you know, for, for like price analysis? Yep. All right. So if they say no, my favorite go to, is the opposite approach and it works beautifully. So if they say no, I say, cool, no worries. Can I ask you, while I have you, if I run across a great deal in Omaha, can I let you know about it? Would you be potentially open to getting another rental if I came across a great deal? So okay. you flip the script, right? To them being a buyer now, and this further prolongs the conversation for you to generate a potential nurture or potential lead. Okay, cool. And at that point, right? I mean, uh, so then you can add them to your database and start building that relationship. And now once they, if they say yes, and you go towards the price analysis, the steps you want to take there is, and here's what the conversation sounds like. So Joshua, well, why don't I do this? And listen, I don't mind at all. Before we do anything, I'd, I'd like to do a, a simple price analysis on the property to share with you how much the home is worth in today's market. And then after looking at those numbers, you can decide if selling the home now or maybe sometime in the future makes sense. Does that seem fair? They say, yes. I say, okay, great. What's your email? Okay, got it. And then I set a phone appointment. Okay. Then I set a phone appointment. So I say, okay, great. And then give yourself 24 hours. Don't, I try not to do same day appointments if I don't have to. Okay. Just say, hey, uh, so what I'll do is let me, give me today and the morning to, to do this pricing analysis, I'll email it to you. 
And then um, what time tomorrow can we talk? I've got some time in the afternoon, like three, four o'clock. Would that work for you? And this is, you know, you can do these in the afternoon. These don't have to be in your early prospecting time. Okay, cool. Try to do them in the afternoon. Actually, like one to three is great time for these. Perfect. Right. And then, and then you can, you can have it in front of you. They can have it in front of them. Eventually you can start doing zoom screen shares. Don't worry about that yet. Um, but that's ideally where you want to get to, where you're sharing the screen. You've got a seller net sheet, all of that stuff. But right now we're just trying to get them a nice range, right? To say, Hey, you know what? I haven't seen the home, but based on the research, based on the data, it, it appears that the home should sell for between this range and this range. And if that was the case, is this something that you would be open to as far as selling the home if you got this number. And if then, then you're gonna see if you have an opportunity. Okay, yeah, that makes sense. Um, because because recently, you know, I, I just get their email, send them the price analysis and then follow up, but, but the phone call kind of ends, you know. At, like, right. Their email. Yeah, so you gotta just do the, it's essentially a, a high level CMA presentation over the phone. Okay. With these absentee owners, you're trying to get the goal with the absentee owners, you're trying to get them to the point of reviewing a sales, a potential sales price and getting them to a decision to say, yeah, I mean, if we could get that, I think we would sell it or, you know, I don't know, whatever the case may be, we want to get them to that point. We've got the second phone calls where, the, where, where all the magic happens. Okay. Yeah. Awesome. And, and those people, again, I mean, all those people... The conversion is a little bit longer on them. But again, this is why you, you keep doing what you're doing every day in three, six, nine months, 12 months, you're going to see so many of these contacts turn into real opportunities. And again, it, it will take that long for you to have an aha to say, man, I talked to Bob in May of 2021 and I listed his home December 4th. Okay. And you'll be like, damn, okay, now I get it. But by then, your, your pipeline would have manifested, it would have matured, and now you're getting listings from the work you did in April. You see, you're not going to reap the reward for all that work you did in April and in May for a couple months from now, right? Or at least a couple weeks from now with these FISBOs, because how many yeah. FISBOs are in your Monday folder right now? That thing's got to be getting big. Yeah, I think I'm following up with about 40. Dude, I mean, 40. it's amazing. Yeah. It's going to be over 100 by the end of May. Yeah. And you'll, you'll just, just hang in there, you know, just say, keep telling yourself, I mean, this is your, this is your college education. Yeah, that's right. I mean, so let's just get through and you don't have to do this for four years to win. You got to just pay the price for a couple of months, build a nice pipeline. And dude, you are going to get listings consistently. It just sucks right now and embrace the suck. So yeah, this, this shitty is terrible. You know, this is not very fun, but I got to, this is what I have to do to build my career because mm -hmm. this is the path I chose. Yeah. Is that fair? Yeah, that's fair. Cool. Awesome, right. man. And then you got the leads we sent you from share group, right? Yeah. Those are so much better than Vulcans. It's, I know. It's incredible. Yeah. Yeah. And dude, you, I told you, you had a lot in your market. Yeah. Yeah. That's a lot. How many we send you? 10,000, 15,000? It was 20,000. 20,000 absentee owners. Yeah, that's right. I mean, dude, those are enough to last you your whole career. Yeah. So you put those into Mojo and you just hammer them, right? Yeah, yeah. I mean, in Mojo, I can I can get like 100 dials out in like half an hour. Yeah. And those conversations are simple for you. I mean, they're just going to keep getting better and better. And with you standing up with a little more, more energy, like you start building, like having more fun and smiling. Like, I love that. I don't know if you saw my live cold calling session today with expired listings, but I'm laughing with prospects. Like I just had fun with them. Like it's not so serious. You know what I mean? Like that's the other thing, just having, trying to enjoy yourself more on these phone calls. I think you'll, you'll, uh, that will do a lot for your mindset as well. Okay. Yeah. So dude, have an awesome weekend. And then uh, I'm sure we'll catch up next week. All right. Sounds good. All right, brother. Talk soon. Yep. Bye.